بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Continuing in the Yara Salihin Volume 1, New Chapter, Chapter 45, entitled Visiting the Pious Person, Loving Them, and Adoption of Their Company. Allah the Exalted says in Quran, in Surah, to, surah 18, verses 60 through 66, of which the meaning is, And remember when Musa said to his boy servant, I will not give up traveling until I reach the junction of the two seas or until I spend years and years in traveling. Up to Musa said to Al-Kidr, may I follow you so that you teach me something of that knowledge, God is in truth, which Allah have taught you. And keep yourself, O Muhammad, this is in the same surah, verse 28, and keep yourself, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, patiently with those who call on their Rabb, i.e. your companions who remember their Rabb with glorification, praising in salah, and other righteous deeds, morning and afternoon, seeking the pleasure of their Lord. Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, reported after the death of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said to Umar radiallahu anhu, let us visit Um Ayman radiallahu anha as the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to visit her. As we came up to her, she wept. They, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu ma, said to her, what makes you weep? Do you not know that what Allah has in store for his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is better than this worldly life? She said, I weep not because I am ignorant of the fact that what is in store for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter is better than this world. But I weep because of the revel because the revelation has ceased to come. This moved both of them to tears and they began to weep along with her. Muslim. Commentary. Um Ayman radiallahu anha belonged to Ethiopia and was a slave girl of the Prophet's father, Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib. After the death of Abdullah, Um Ayman radiallahu anha remained with the Prophet's mother, Amina, and took great care in his upbringing. Subsequently, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam set her free, and then she was married to Zayd bin Haritha radiallahu anhu. This hadith holds justification for weeping over the death of the pious and also shows that it is desirable to visit such persons to whom one's friends go to pay respect. The incident mentioned in this hadith also shows the love that the companions of the Prophet ﷺ had for him. نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين As for our talk this morning إن شاء الله we have one hadith from Kitab al-Targhib wa al-Targhib of those that Imam uh, al-Hafiz al-Munziri had brought this hadith under the chapter of purification and we utilize in the hadith 
for the necessity of purification uh, physically and spiritually, nevertheless for such a gathering and brotherhood and strengthening the brotherhood and keeping it distant from things which can destroy the brotherhood, I choose to and select this hadith today, inshallah. The hadith is by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marra bi ha'itin min hitani Mecca aw al Madina fa sami'a sawta insanayni yu'adzaban fi quburihima fa qala al Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إنهما لا يعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير ثم قال بلى كان أحدهما لا يستتر من بوله وكان الآخر يمشي بالنميمة That the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم had passed by a burial place in Mecca or in Medina and he said he heard a voice of two people who are punished in their grave the Prophet ﷺ said indeed they are in serious punishment and not because they commit a major sins then he said Indeed it is, as for one of them, he was not careful from his urine. As for the other, he used to carry tails. This is a rough meaning of the hadith, and we go in details and what we gather from the hadith. And we see where this hadith can relate to our program here and our upbringing and cultivation. First of all, we see that the Prophet ﷺ, he heard something which nobody else from those who are company him is able to hear. He heard the punishment which take place in the grave and the Prophet had told us in hadith which is the meaning is لَوْلَا أَلَّا تَدَافَنُوا لَسَأَلْتُ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى أَنْ يُسْمِعَكُمْ عَذَابَ الْقَبْرِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم if I don't fear that you may that that you are not going to go and bury your dead if not because this fear otherwise I will ask Allah to make you capable to hear the punishment that take place in the grave and this shows you the rahmah and the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ towards this ummah and the concern of the Prophet ﷺ. This also to teach us that our leaders and our teachers and those who are in charge of our affairs, they have to learn also the Rahmah and they have a sensitive heart for the followers and those that they work with So as a result of this, as the Prophet ﷺ, he, out of this fear, he did not ask Allah to make us hear the punishment in the grave. But that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had informed us about the punishment in the grave and that also the Prophet ﷺ had told us about it. And this is a part of the aqeedah of the Muslims. This is part of the aqeedah of the Muslims to believe 
in the punishment of the grave as well as the reward in the grave. So the Prophet ﷺ heard something which is the Sahaba did not hear it. And he had told us also that everything of Allah's creation can hear the punishment in the grave with exception of Thakalayn which are the human being and the jinn. And he said if the human being get to hear the punishment of the grave, they will be shocked. They will be shocked, faint. Okay? So, uh, although there are some people among Muslims, they don't have the proper aqidah, and they deny the punishment in the grave. Nevertheless, you have to know that the punishment in the grave is true and it's been mentioned also in the Quran is not only in the Hadith okay Allah is saying النار يعرضون عليها غدوا وعشيا ويوم القيامة أدخلوا آل فرعون أشد العذاب that the hellfire they are exposed to it by the morning and the evening and in the day of judgment but the family or the group and the followers of Fir'aun, the worst kind of punishment. So Allah had mentioned that there is a punishment happening now, before the hereafter, and that those people who are kuffar, all right, they are exposed to it every day by the morning and the evening, all right. So the punishment of the grave was no doubt, and this part of the unseen. And also the na'im and the enjoyment and the blessing in the grave is part of our aqidah and is real and true. But all the things we could not see it, we could not touch it, but al-lazina yu'minuna bil ghayb. For those who believe in the unseen, and this is part of the unseen. Why those people who uh, deny this punishment of the grave because he said that the hadith is not mutawatir. Mm. Hadith mutawatir, a hadith which has been related by a group from other group to another group, okay, that by no means it can be a lie or doubt about the information that you're receiving. As example, 40 people, they hear the hadith from the Prophet sallallahu and they would narrate it, and 40 people hear from them, and continue like this until this, until to come to one of the collector of the hadith, like Imam Bukhari or Imam Muslim. But they say the hadith that came related to Azab al Qabr is a had, a single, that means by one or two or three Sahabis, okay? But this is not, this argument doesn't hold any water. Because we see that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, those people say what? We could not take the hadith ahad in aqidah matter, something related to belief. But this is a lie. People fabricate and make rules and regulation. You understand? So they can take and leave what they want from this deen. But when we look in the deen and the practice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We know the famous hadith that the Prophet ﷺ sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Yemen. How many Mu'ad do we know in the time of Rasulullah ﷺ that went to Yemen? It's one. Wahid. Huh? Wahid. Yes. And this Wahid went to where? To Yemen. Did he want to teach them only about Salah? No. The hadith is saying what? إِنَّكَ تَأْتِي قَوْمًا أَهْلَ كِتَابٍ فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلْ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ أَنْ يُوَحِدُ اللَّهِ or shahadat an la ilaha illallah. Indeed, you're going to be approaching people of the book. Let it be the first thing you teach them or invite them to it is what? The tawheed. La ilaha illallah, the oneness of Allah. So, how many people want to be people of Yemen? One man by name Mu'ad, radiallahu anhu. Okay? So, and Mu'ad did not go to teach them about salah only. He went to teach them about 
the foundation of Islam, which is the Tawheed and the Aqeedah. And the Prophet told him, if they accepted this from you, now you teach them about Salah. Okay? So how, if the Hadith Ahad is not acceptable, how the Prophet Sallallahu sent in only one man to Yemen, why he didn't send 40 or 30 or 20 people? And the people of Yemen did not say to Ma'az, okay, we could not accept this from you because you are only one man. Okay? So this information is not re reliable. We need another 15, 20 people with you so we can believe what you say. This is not correct. Okay? Nevertheless, that the azab of the qabr, the punishment of the grave, as well as the reward, are the reality, but this is something from the unseen, and this is out of the mercy of Allah, that he did not expose us to it, otherwise we could not function. You understand? We could not function in this life. So here the Prophet wasallam passed by the grave, and was two people there, they go through a punishment. So the Prophet ﷺ said they are in serious punishment. And not because they commit a major sins. And as we understand that the sins are divided to two categories. There is kabair and there is sagair. And this also mentioned in the Quran as well as in the Hadith. Okay? In tajtanibu kabair ma tunhawna anu nukafir ankum sayyatikum. If you avoid the major sins that Allah said, we will shall forgive you for the minor things, okay, sins. Okay, so this is kabair and sagar. So uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, these people in serious punishment, but it's not because they commit a major sins. But he said, indeed it is. What this mean is not, but indeed it is. That means what they did is a small or is a minor, okay, but the result of it is great. And this to teach us something is not how small the sin, because we do not, the one who views the sin to be small or big, Allah is the one who determines what is minor, what is great, and also the impact or the result, the outcome of the sin, this also determines how serious it is. Okay? How serious it is. Uh, there is a hadith which has been classified by different scholars to be weak, but only I'm going to mention it here uh, for only to give you an idea how small the sin and how it can be serious also. That it says that two men pass by people who worship other than Allah, idols and things like this. So the kuffar, they said to the first man, okay, make a korban, make a contribution to our gods, okay? So he said, I have nothing to give. This case, he said to him, give something even if it's so little. So the hadith, supposed to be saying, according to the scholars who authenticated the hadith, قَرِّبْ وَلَوْ ذُبَابَ Contribute anything, even if it's a fly. But we want you to know, like I understand, I'm, just, I'm explaining it to you. We want you to know that you are down with the program, okay? So it doesn't matter. Uh, Brother Khalis always said, but one dollar is a charity box. And somebody says, say, okay, I only have a nickel. So it doesn't matter. But the main thing to see that you put something in the box so we know that you're down in the... So the man said, I don't have anything, you understand, to make contribution to the gods. He said, it doesn't matter, but even if it's a fly. So he gave a fly. So he let him pass, they did not punish him, but Allah commit him to go to hellfire. Because of those a fly, who, who buy a fly? Who care for a fly? Mm. But it's not what you give, it's the principles, it's the aqidah. Mm. You understand? Mm. This is the serious, okay, the matter. So, he became from the people of hellfire, because you made shirk. Alright? The other man, when he came, he said, Karab Zubaba. Karab anything, he said, I don't have. They say, give anything, even a fly. 
He said, by no means I can give anything, okay, other for the sake of Allah. So they took him and threw him in hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted him to Jannah to be from the people of Jannah. So it's not the matter of how small and how big, okay? Like they say uh, that, look how a life of a person can be taken according to Islamic law, because something it may be, it be the size of the uh, of one inch. They say that a man, if he enter a woman uh, private parts, okay, that is not his wife, that basically by sticking the head of his penis inside him, now he became committing something haram. So it's not how small or how little or whatever it is, but this had caused him to lose his life according to Islamic law. You see what we see? <coughs> so the point here, the Prophet ﷺ said, the crime they commit is not a... They did not kill, they did not steal, okay? But he again said, no, indeed it is. Because what? Because the great punishment they receive as a result of the minor sins they had committed. He said, as for the first one, okay, he was not careful, okay, from the splashing of his urine. Mm. He was not careful about the way how he relieved himself. Like somebody go use the bathroom and doesn't make it stinger, okay? No toilet paper, no water, no stone, nothing, okay? Urine and keep walking. This is one form. Or that a person who go use the bathroom, urinated, and he rush himself, so although he wash his private parts, but the urine is still driven after he leaving. Okay? So a person, as example, supposed to wait for a second, make sure maybe he can wash a little bit, make sure that's no any urine, you understand, or he may even was the left uh, hand that you can pass your two fingers lightly in, in, in uh, uh, the penis to make sure that nothing and after this you can wipe or you can clean or you wash there is this one form other form as example if a person is stood up in a place which is solid and urinated so a splash can come back okay it is permissible you understand for certain cases for a person to stand up and urinate him, all right? Uh, because some people are under the assumption that you could not stand up and urinate. This is not correct. As the Prophet wasallam even been seen, you understand, one time doing this, and the place was <coughs> like impurity, your <coughs> All the trash and things like this, okay? So basically, there is a different ways that a person can not careful from the splashing of the water, uh, the urine, by the way you be standing, or the way where you urine, urinated, or that you are in rush, or you did not to, do the proper extension, okay? So when this splashing coming back to you, come in your clothes or comes in your thighs, okay? And after this you go making wudu and making salah, but you already have impurity in you. So now you can see that the foundation was not correct. So what you build on it is not acceptable. The foundation which is purification from the urine, you didn't do it right. So as a result of this, the salah that you did is not acceptable. So this is the crime that you commit, okay? He was not careful, okay, and cautioned from the urine. Okay, when he passed your he was not careful from this. Alright? So there's something that's very important we be careful from it when we use the bathroom. This is one thing in general that we have to learn. The issue is that we need to focus in it, although that both of them equal, you understand, is important. Carry the mima. Okay? Wa amal akhar, fakana yamshi bayna nasi bin namima. Fakana yamshi bin namima. As for the second person who's in the grave, that was in a great punishment, that because he carried tails. He carried tails. 
And this is a destruction of the Muslim community. This can be a destruction for the brotherhood. For such a gathering like this, as example, may Allah bless it, I mean, okay, that we have to be careful. As example, it may be, uh, I said uh, to Anwar, and maybe I understand Mustafa sitting here, and he hears a conversation, or he's not, or I said to Anwar, I don't like the way how Mustafa was talking, or Abdul Haq is this and that. Abdul Haq is not here. But here Mustafa will go say, guess what? I heard this, or the Imam was saying such and such. about this is what you call it, carry tales. Okay? Whatever been said about somebody, okay, and the person is not there, now somebody else will take it and convey to the other person. This is not your business. This is not your job. Okay? What I'm doing can be maybe wrong, okay? Or can be for some benefit, security, whatever reason. I say, you better watch. Be careful or something, okay? Now you, you have no business to carry this. Because this is going to bring about animosity, hatred, it breaks the unity and the brotherhood. And this is something that we have to be careful. Although the Hadith is talking about the Namima, but I want to turn a little bit and understand the Hadith in a greater meaning. Which what? That anything that you see is going to affect the brotherhood, okay? And the unity of the Muslims is that you shouldn't touch it as a Muslim, okay? Do not bring anything that can spoil the atmosphere of the brotherhood, all right? But here's an example that a person going and carry tales. Now this person carry one word or a sentence, okay? But the effect and the impact of this word that you carry it is going to spoil. Now this person is not talking to this person. This person, you understand, maybe take it farther and say, okay, I'm not going to the mosque anymore. Maybe the other person, you understand, said, okay. I'm going to tell him. He said, I'm not a man enough. I'm going to show who is the man. So he wait for him coming outside and boom, <laughs> give him one. Okay? And the other person say, wow, well, man, man, you hit me. Okay? I'm going to show you I'm a man enough or not. And go get his gun. And you can see, it started with one word. It started with one word that somebody carried it. Okay? And after this, this is the way how things can happen. So it is very important that we be careful about disturbing our unity, our brotherhood, and all these things. And that we need to always assume the best about our brothers, and always try to, uh, to find excuse why this person, as example, promised me to come, why he didn't show up, or why this person, you understand, was, uh, maybe you understand he something, he missed his school this morning, so he upset, this is the reason maybe he did not give me salam. Try to find reasons and also try to excuse other people from, to, bring, to keep the unity and the brotherhood together, because this is something very important. And this is the work of the shaitan. Okay? وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِ يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْزَغُ بَيْنَهُ and say to my slave servant to say the, always the best. And to talk the best. Why? Because Allah said the shaitan always try to find a means and ways how to break the relationship between you and your Muslim brother. Okay? This is the job of the shaitan. Mm -hmm. He have nothing except to understand that how to break the unity or how to bring the people closer to hellfire by committing the sin and the haram sin. So we have to be careful, and we take these two things in consideration, inshallah. We'll be more careful about our uh, uh, purification. And as example, the Prophet ﷺ saying, وَيْلُ لِلْأَعْقَابِ مِنَ النَّارِ Woe to the heels from hellfire. Because sometimes we wash, make wudu, we did not wash our feet properly, and the heel from outside would be dry. Okay? So you found the whole foot, or in the back of your el elbow, as example. You notice this sometimes, if you did not take the water and spread it, and rub with the other hand like this, you found the elbows dry. So if the elbow dry, okay, 
And though it's something so small, like almost a quarter, but Irudu is not correct. And after this, you go to make Salah. And Allah knows best how long you're going to be doing this. So we have to be careful about small things and minor things which can destroy our good deed, destroy our, our unity, bring about to understand animosity, bring things like this. And you can see, with one word, a man can be haram to his wife. Okay? He can... All what, the word divorce, talaq. Okay? Now... She is not a, 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 a wife for them, to him anymore after he understands the third time. So sometimes somebody says, Brother, it's only one way. Brother was only aware. The Prophet وسلم, when uh, Aisha said about Sophia, some were like, Is that mean she's a short? Why are you? you love Sophia? Understand? What's the jealousy? Okay? She says, Who is she? She's a short lady. But the Prophet said to her, What? لقد قلت كلمة لو مزجت بمياه البحر لغيرت أو كما قال الصحابة indeed you utter one single word with only one single word if been dropped in the ocean it will corrupt the whole ocean that means the sin that came out as a result of this word is so much so huge so not you understand view things like brother this all what I said, you understand, I say, understand, I don't think he like you. I didn't think anything. All what I said, you understand, I, I, he was saying your name. You don't know what one word can cause. And again, what made you to be from the people of Jannah? You utter one sentence. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah made you from the people of Jannah. Regardless what happened from you, okay? And the other person denied to say, the same word, now from the people of fire. So let's not try to view things according to our way of viewing. But Allah is the one who measures things. Okay? Allah has his own scale and his own measurement. And he's the one who's going to tell us, this is halal and this is haram. This is major, this is minor. And let's be careful about how we worship in Allah and how we you understand, interact, and deal with each other, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Exactly. Any question? Yes. Yes. It, it didn't use, I'm asking, it didn't say backbite. It kept saying... Namima. The meaning, yeah. Namima. Namima. Which is? Carry tales. Backbite. Backbiting, uh, carrying is tails is not backbiting? No, 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 no. The backbiting is totally different from the namima. Carrying okay. tails, you understand that I have conversation about somebody and the person is not there and you take it and you carry tell him about carry it. it on. Okay. You carry it on. The backbiting, I mention you, you understand, in your absence, you understand, with something to put you down or uh, take out of your personality or things like this, okay, that is, is not good, you understand, like, this man is not, okay, so you taking me, me and somebody else conversation to the third party, this is an amima, mm -hmm. the backbiting that you talking about something in his absence, about something that you don't say it in front of him, and if he knows that you're talking about he's not going to like it. Okay, so you're okay. carrying it when you get to the third person, you tell them. Yeah. Me and Sabri talk about Khalis. Right. Okay? Come, uh, Abu Abdullah overheard us. He will come to inform you. Right. If he did not tell you, you're not going to know that we talk about you. Right. Okay? Now, the backbiting that I go to Abu Abdullah and say, Khalis is such and such. Hmm. Okay? You see the difference now? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> Clear? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. They are, they are kin to one another, though, right? So what? They are kin to one another, though, right? Related. They are related. Yeah. Are they related the to one another? Namima and the Hiba and Namima. Uh, I don't know uh, if the cousins, the brothers, <laughs> nephews, I don't know. <laughs> All what I know, this is haram and this is haram. This is something discouraging Islam, this is discouraging Islam. 
Maybe they are from the same family. What, what, what are you asking? What, what is it? He's joking. Like, huh? related to me, like, joking okay with you. Wait, I can't tell. Similar, similar. Yeah, I can't listen to both of you. What did you say? I'm saying was they related, just like it was saying. Uh, who? Uh, who related? Who? Kind of very. Oh, oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, he didn't. Say, he said related. I don't know. Who was related? Okay. okay. Regardless if they are related or not related, this is haram. This is haram. This is wrong, and this is wrong. But it's different characteristics that we are forbidden to do it. Mm -hmm. We are forbidden from backbiting, slandering, uh, yeah, carrying tales, terrible. you understand, gossiping, <laughs> all these things, okay? And by the way, I remember, uh, inshallah, I think, now I make it a surprise for you tonight, inshallah. I have a question now. Yes. Uh, uh, regarding the person who's making the do, uh, when you get to the point of washing his feet, he takes the water in his hand and he's wiping his feet instead to wash it. No, he's supposed to wash. Unless he's wearing a socks in which... No, bare or, no, no, no. This is, is this not, okay? You need to cover, you understand, to... Unless that he take enough water to wet his feet. Okay? There's no wiping, okay? You're supposed to wash. He said ghasl. He didn't say wipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all on this list. Mm -hmm. Yes, um. um the thing you're talking about with Namima, I think that's very important because um, in our society, or the way we are nowadays, even amongst the Muslims, it's um, it's almost seen as some people see it as a noble thing to say. Like if you hear somebody talking about somebody, people take it almost as an honor to say, you know, I'm, 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 I don't mean anything, but I just want to tell you, I'm gonna give you a heads up. Brother so and so said this, or somebody said this. So mm -hmm. it's like the opposite nowadays. People feel like they're defending someone's honor mm -hmm. by telling them that so and so said something about them. So it's not even just some, you see it amongst women, but amongst men now, where we say like we're we're doing our brother a favor by saying that hey, you gotta watch out. This brother's talking about you, or he said this and this and that, mm -hmm. and he thinks he's doing something good. Is this not acceptable in the Islam? As the Prophet وسلم, said to the Sahaba, I don't like to, one of you to come to bring something, you understand, about others, because when I come out, I want to come with a good, clean heart towards everybody. So that means whatever they said, okay, in my absence, don't carry it. Okay, I didn't hear it, this is it. Okay? Yes, Mustafa. Two questions. Uh, the, <clears throat> the carrying of tales. Is that good and bad news? Like, in other words, if somebody's talking good about somebody, and <coughs> they go to the other person and say, oh, you know, by the way... No, 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 no. Is that included? No. no. It's just no. bad things. Yeah. Bad things, of course, you understand. Okay, so good is okay if somebody... Talks yeah, if, if you go, as example, we give a class, and you go to somebody said, oh, the imam give good class this morning, you understand? Or the Imam <coughs> share some of his perfume with us or something. No, like no, no. Uh, let's, you and Habib were talking about me. B about say, stuff. About me, but good, something good. Okay. And then uh, Brother Abdul Haq comes and tells me, oh, the Imam, you know, and Habib, they were talking about, they said this about you, it was good, the good things. Alhamdulillah. Right, so is that tale <coughs> carrying tales? Is that, or that's a, should we, that be done <coughs> or no? No, we're so. talking about something which bring a evil and misunderstanding okay. about the people between people each other. Okay. Because if, if Anwar come and tell you that me and Habib was talking highly and admire how you understand doing this and that, right. you, you're going to have a big smile and you feel good more. Okay. Mm. So it's not yeah, going to affect clear. our unity and our brotherhood. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, and now the other thing is, now. so if it's bad anyway, that's, they all in trouble, the tales and the people talking back because it's backbiting. So of it's course. All, right. Of course. Okay, the other question was when you're urinating, uh, I, I noticed when Not me. No, with everybody. <laughs> oh, <you> know, everybody. <laughs> no, not everybody. <laughs> you oh, you know, urinating? No, no, I'm not really, No, how to use it, okay? Say, <laughs> when we ask or when we say, we say, when somebody. Okay. okay Thank when you. someone. Thank you. Thank you. It, 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 was it was not enough for me to make me urinate, so we make all of us. <laughs> You're right, you're right. Okay. When someone urinates, like... You I see, we try to help each other here. It's not only about Islamic, but even uh, the way... Although I don't know 
that much English like any of you. But still, if we know something, because we're like a mirror to each other, we try to help each other understand about anything. Uh, when someone urinates, they use, and they're using a urinal, you know, like you see this a lot, you go places, you know, you, you know it's, it's splashing, right? Now, if somebody, if they're running the water, like, let's say if they run the water, and, you know, the water purifies you, but if the water's running and somebody does, does that, and if it did splash on you, would that be considered because the water's running? That it may be, you know, if it is Which down, water? The one the, the person the, pass or the water that coming from the, the tank? coming down from, from, the, from the tank. The fresh water coming down from the tank. So the if urinal. it's going in the urinal and the water's going to bring it down, as the, if anything did flat, you know, splash on you, it just still water is dirty, mixed with it, you mean? Water, right, because water purifies. Okay. But, um, but it still could be contaminated. That's just my question from okay. my own knowledge. That we have to do our best. You understand? to stay away from any impurity, okay? And if something happens that a person can clean it, he has to. But if you are in a case which, like in the airport, mm -hmm. where you're going to understand to change your clothes or do this, and the salah will be missed. <coughs> so you pray in this case accordingly to the best of your ability. Taqullah <laughs> mastata'atu. Okay. And also, if anything did get on you, you can always take water in your hand and just wipe over it? No, okay. because you always splash it more. No. <laughs> spread it more. No, after. Let's just say. No, this is what I'm saying. Yes, yes after. Oh, because if it? instead of one grab here, right. now I put water and do it like this, now I spread it more in my clothes. Right. So, you understand, you can take you the spot, like as example like this, mm -hmm. and you can wash it, and two or three times and squeeze it. And you understand this is the way to remove the impurity in it. But put in the water and rub it like this is is going to be <coughs> more. Okay? The Allah does it. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you don't have to, but if you make it less than three, that the one or the two that you make it you make sure that it had cover the part that you wash it properly. Okay, so if I'm going to wash my arm one time, mm -hmm. I will take the water and put it and make sure you understand mm -hmm. I have covered it good mm -hmm. with one time. So one time acceptable, okay? But you have to make sure that it cover the limb properly. Question, Yes. Well, a couple of questions. I want to make sure I have proper understanding. Uh, I know you, you said we shouldn't judge um, what we think is a small sin. But if, if I'm understanding correctly, like if, what, we, what we're saying, the punish, the major punishments come from is when that small sin evolves into something major, like you know the small sin of not protecting yourself from urine, and then the major sin, which happens from that, is that your the salah is not accepted, or the small sin of carrying tails, and then the major sin happening where the brotherhood is uh, disunited. Um, so I guess my question is, uh, for instance, if, if I trim my beard and I shouldn't, like, you know, you go to the barbershop and you get the line up and, you know, you're really not supposed to touch your beard. But that doesn't have a, 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 a larger or major effect. Can we, could, could one expect to still, uh, you know, well, I shouldn't expect the same outcome. I mean, because that didn't lead to anything. I understand, yes. Or is doing a small sin continuously over and over again. Would that be like, you get okay. a major sin? All right. Uh, we have to know you see, it, it's going to go in too much details, but basically there is certain things that would be sufficient that you do. The Prophet is saying, Ma amartukum bishayin fa'tu minhu mastata'atum. If I command you to do something, do as much as you can do from such a thing I ask you to do. So if a person grow his beard, but he, he, he line it up and all these things, did he grow his beard or not? Yes, he did. Okay? But, did he do it exactly like the Prophet ﷺ is not? So, is he getting the same thawab reward in like somebody who didn't touch it totally? Of course not. But did he fulfill the requirements that by Islam, if you see him by the 
door, the front door. Can you tell he has a beard or not? Yes, he has. So the scholar will say that this is makruh, the lining up, this like, okay? That means you are not getting 99% or 100% reward. You may get in 85. And 85 is, or 80 or 7 is still pass. Not even pass. <laughs> you get a B plus, okay? So, <laughs> so is everything you understand? We're going to have to understand it accordingly when it comes in the class. Because we don't to, I give you a rule, and after this you take the rule, and after this you're going to apply to different things. Because I'm scared that somebody will apply the wrong rule to something, okay? A second question, kind of like uh, regarding. If I can continue the hadith so we can pay attention. Okay, فَاجْتَنِبُوا So the nahi is different from the amr. The Prophet said, when I order you to do something, do as much as you, can. you get closer to what I'm asking you to do, okay? Like we said about the beard, as example. But if I forbid you from something, leave it totally. Because leaving, you don't need to do anything, okay? Don't stand up. So that means I, I, I remain sitting. But when I say stand up, now you have to make some effort to get up and, you see? So even if you did like this, at least that you show me a try. To stand up. So there is difference between the Amr and the Nahi. The command and to be uh, forbidden to doing something. So when it comes about prohibition, you have to leave it in totally. Okay? Yeah. But when the Prophet say do something, now we have to try to get B, B plus, A, like this. Mm -hmm. My second question is in regard to the Hadith of Brother Habib in regard to Um Amr. Just out of curiosity, I should say, is this the mother of Usama bin Zayd? Yes. Yes. Umayyad. What about Umayyad? Was she the, was she the mother of Usama bin, Usama Zayd. bin Zayd? Because she, she married Zayd bin Halifa later. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not, I, I, was, I, I know. It's crazy. I was just doing the math. Um, she had to be at least 35, 40 years older than him. That's how I was just... Okay, but this is what I'm saying. I, I could not see where is the relationship because this was even a slave girl for His, the father of exactly, the Prophet exactly, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Exactly. So okay. I'm like, man, she has to be at least 40, 50 years So I was just trying to figure out, <laughs> you know... I'm but like, uh, Alhamdulillah, this is not going to help us or harm us anything in our aqidah, our ibadah, know, anything. But it's something I understand for... The mathematic, nothing else. Well, 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 it leads me to another question, because just a reflection. You said two questions. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Okay. You're, you're right, you're right. I'll, I'll put it to the side. Don't let him say it. Don't let him follow up. Don't let him say it. Don't let him follow up. Brothers, when I get into details, I'm working on limited time, so I got to bombard him, because I don't want to be able to do this again anytime soon. May Allah, brother, we just yesterday were making dua for you. Yes. We mentioned you by name. We ask Allah to make things easy in you as well as your family. Amen. And we never know who is the good, but inshallah is Allah so compassionate, <coughs> most merciful, and that we have to be patient with the qadr of Allah and put our trust in Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you never know who is the good. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, I'm amazed by some people, the they been pulled towards Jannah by chain, chains, okay? Sometimes a person, Allah had decreed a certain higher rank for him in Jannah, and he could not achieve it by <coughs> his deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will create certain situation to elevate him, to reach his uh, the level that he had decreed for it. So whatever calamity and musiba comes, inshallah, and we never know, like as example, when the Prophet sallallahu is saying that if Allah guide one person through your effort, this greater to you than all the red camels. So we don't know, maybe Allah uh, meant it for you to be a means for da'wah and to help some people to get to see the light of Islam. Amen. So inshallah, do the best from what you understand before you and leave it to Allah. Yeah. And like Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullah alayh, when the sultan or the ruler took him and prison him, 
he looked at it to be a time for privacy khalwa between him and the Allah and to focus more about his deen and his knowledge and his studying and all these things so let's do the best of what you understand whatever situation we have but uh, like I said two days ago or yesterday or the day before actually I had mentioned here without going any detail they said that we need to make dua for you and for your family, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you. So you can have the whole time if you want me to take my day off for you, for you, for you away. Inshallah. You still have a question? <laughs> no, no more. <laughs> they are related, eh? Not, not a fifth one. They kill each other. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else before we close? Yes, you used the word musiba just now. Musiba, calamity, what? disaster, calamity, something. Calamity. Yeah, musiba, okay. Ma asaba mi musibatin fil ardi wala fi sama wala fi anfusikum illa fi kitab min qabla an nabra'ah inna thalika ala Allah yaseer. There is no calamity, calamity or disaster that heaven, you understand, in your in heaven, in the earth, in the earth or in yourself, unless that is in, 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 in a book Decree. with Allah before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested. So everything is by the qadr of Allah and everything is known to Allah. And it's very important that we believe in the unseen and we believe in the qadr of Allah and that we learn how to be patient with the qadr of Allah. You understand? Because you always remember, I'm a slave of Allah, and He's the master, He do whatever He wants, and you don't see why Allah decreed such a thing. Okay? There is always good. And like I said, sometimes that the level that Allah had decreed for you to be in Jannah, you could not reach it by your salah and your classes, and, and so Allah will create a situation which will elevate you to get this. Subhanallah. So we always have to be pleased with the qadr of Allah, regardless. Yeah. Somebody say, brother, what can be good? You have understand that I'm going to be deported from the country. I could not be with my family. You, know, you don't know. You don't know what is for you. Okay? But you have to trust that Allah is ghafoor, rahim, kind, and merciful, and he, yes, why is whatever is doing is good and inshallah that there is a good in everything that Allah decreed. My, my ex brother in law, the Imam Mustafa Morocco, is in Brooklyn in Bronx, Imam, doing rookie healing people. They came to his house four o'clock in the morning, took him out almost in his underwear, and his wife and them, the baby, everybody's home. He didn't okay. want huh? say the case. immigration. Oh came and took him and, and locked him up for two, three months, and they, they shipped him to Morocco. But just to verify what you're saying as evidence of Allah's decree, his wife gave me $35,000 to mail to him after they shipped him out of here. And they didn't want to go. He's doing okay in New York, in America. And, but he got over there. King gave him a masjid, a house. <laughs> his family came behind him. So like you said, Allah's decree... It was better for him to go there, I guess, than to stay here in America. You know. May Allah make it easy on all yeah. of us, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing Zakat knows Zakat. <laughs> with Zakat. the end good results that Allah has All right, guys. Yeah. Everybody, make sure you bring your... Uh, let me close this. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik nashadu Allah.